Good evening, everyone. It's October 9th. Welcome to another installment of Aligning with Success. Uh, it's been a couple of weeks since our last call, since it was preempted by the Nikan uh, kickoff call last week. Um, this week has been a kind of a ups and downs week for me. You probably wouldn't have noticed, but we had some uh, pretty interesting things happen. And it's actually something I want to just sort of touch on because it really brings to mind um, how important it is that we love what we do and we do what we love. I, uh, my family lost a very dear um, member uh, this, this week, very uh, surprisingly. It wasn't unexpected, but it was unexpected uh, so quickly as it, as it happened. In any event, this was a person who was one of my first mentors in life. And so, and my father's a partner in business for over 30 plus years. Um, very, I mean, I, it was such a, it's such a close relationship family wise of all the, their family, our family, the, the, the brothers, the, anyway, it was quite an experience. But the thing that stood out for me during this, um, and the funeral on Saturday, which, um, was also, um, well, well attended was just how meaningful this person's life was to so many. I found him an person an important role model to me. One of the very uh, first things I remember him saying to me that was resoundingly clear as I was sharing some of these stories with his kids was um, a lesson that I learned in his office way back when I was a young, impressionable kid. He said, it doesn't matter what you do in life so long as you do your best. And so, um, you know, I think that's one of the lessons from, um, is it Ryu's book, um, The Four Agreements? Uh, do the best you can, whatever it is that you're doing. Um, well, this guy was one of the people who was not only creative, but always involved in improving people's lives in so many wonderful ways. And it was interesting to see how many people there were in attendance at, at his wake and at his funeral. And, and, uh, and I, I heard the most remarkable eulogy from two young men that I'd ever heard in my life, his two, his two boys, it was quite literally the most remarkable eulogy. Afterwards, I, I asked his son, his eldest, I said, you must have been working on this for a while. He said, well, I had about 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. I just couldn't believe in 20 minutes this, this person could put to, to such incredible words um, and prolific. And he says it was easy when, when you guys were sharing all your stories with us. It, was just, it just sort of came. And, uh, and so this is how important I think it is to live a life, a life well lived. And in this, in this particular case, by the way, this person was a sound mind right through and right up to the last day making important decisions about one of the many businesses he was tending to. So, and one of the things that came through in the eulogy was the idea of his, what he acquired and he acquired quite a bit in, in life monetarily through the businesses that he created multiple businesses. One of which was a winery that I most enjoyed the wine and, st and still do Saturday night. That was the, the wine we had for our Thanksgiving dinner at my sister's. In any event, um, they they kept remarking on how what he acquired was through the was through the passion of giving. That it was through his giving that he was receiving all of these rewards that that came by success of the business. That he just continued to parlay into more opportunities for giving. So <clears throat> it kind of reminded me of the business that we're in, in that our business is really a, a business of giving. You can't really win in this business as a taker. And I haven't really seen anybody succeed that way. And, and so it kind of reminds me of the words that I used some uh, about a week or so ago and that Julie Tarr sort of reiterated on her Facebook post, which was the idea that the people at the top of Nikki and the people who've reached the top in the compensation plan, I should say, are people who have uh, at the core of their being the desire and the need to make a difference. And, and that's what drives them. The, the success that comes from that is simply ensues, as, De, as uh, Ben would say. Uh, it just it comes as a result of their passion to make a difference. And, and everything they do is so crystal clear and genuine, that's why I think the, it reciprocates by success. So, um, I had a phenomenal example in my life this weekend to review and reflect on what it looks like to have lived an amazing life and to have touched the lives of so many people because you had it together. You, you had your priorities straight. 
And um, it was just such a touching experience for everyone, including my children. They, this is for my son, Michael, first experience at a funeral. And um, it was just interesting to see his behavior with me right after. Um, so yeah, uh, it's, it's amazing that sometimes in, in, in these difficult situations come such incredible possibilities and opportunities for us. You know, I'm, I'm reminded of what happened also in the recent past with respect to Las Vegas. We haven't had a chance to talk about that, but you know, it's in the worst of times that I think sometimes we really see what, what it means to be human and what potential resides within every one of us to be an amazing contributor to the, the, the situation, the lives around us. And, and, and that's when we become selfless, when we, we put others ahead of ourselves. And the reward is always there. It's not something you have to think about. And I think that's what Niken is so good at. What our, my experience of Niken is so incredible at is that um, I've never had to worry about it coming back. I've never had to think about it. It's just something that happens because of the way it's organized our compensation plan, our business model, et cetera. Um, you know, I don't ask questions like, are you in my downline or even you, are you in your, my pain line? It's just something that doesn't even occur to me to ask. Something that one of my mentors, speaking of mentors, said once upon a time, his name is Bob Proctor. He said, there's only one source, so you only get paid from one place. It doesn't matter where you put the energy in. So just remember that. Maybe Nikan is the mechanism through which it comes back to you, but there is only one source. So that's a good reminder as well. Um, I, I don't know what else I want to add to that, but just a, a nice little head, uh, you know, tip my hat to you guys who are my collaborators in this uh, uh, opportunity to make an, an impact, make a difference. And today we celebrate Thanksgiving Day here in Canada. So I just wanted to say I am very, very grateful for the life that I've been given, the opportunity that I have to serve and the vehicle to have such an incredible a group of people to work with and collaborate with that I'm so proud of and honored to be a part of. So thank you for being a part of my life and a part of the influences that have made me who I am and help us to make the impact that we make in the world. So thank you for all, for all your contributions, for all your insights, for your text messages, for your, you know, sometimes a little, little spark that I need to get my day off, off to the right start as well. And speaking of which I got one today. So I had an email I think it was today, maybe it was yesterday, but I had an email followed by a text message followed by another email. So I had three of you saying to me, okay, you got to watch this, Mike. You just got to watch this movie. It's a documentary. I haven't seen it yet because I just haven't had the time and the space to do it, but I will do it tomorrow. But we've got Barbara Joseph, Suzanne Steele, and Madeline Zaworski on the line here who were the three people who said, Mike, you've got to watch this. So I'm just going to ask if if you found that there's something in that film that would be a value for this group that we're going to record here in this conversation, um, and then maybe we can distribute that, that link so they can have a view of this movie as well, because it's a full-length feature film documentary, and I don't know enough about it other than the incredible accolades you guys had for it, so maybe you can share what insights you gained from this and how it relates to us. I and, think Barbara, Barbara is the leader, so she should take the lead. Okay, Barbara. Okay. There I am. Hi. Yeah. Well, okay. I lost power earlier, so that's why I didn't get your text message. I just ah. got it back. And I'm the one who watched it before everybody else, so it's not quite as fresh in my memory. But um, it's a link I received, and as I was watching it, everything they were saying is what we are all about. It is having a passion and a purpose and making a difference and coming from your heart and being in gen and being genuine and there's people that are doing it in indigenous companies countries and people that are on wall street with corporate companies so it's really showing the diversity and how people are hungry for this change in all walks of life and that um, we all of us have the ability to be a part of that and um, i did take notes that there's conscious capitalism that we can build better businesses all around the world, that it's doing the right thing for the future to create a better world for everyone, that it's all about community and being a heartfelt human being and that we can work harmoniously. I really liked that, um, that we're doing good. For benefit instead of for profit. Mm. 
And there was a piece about millennials and how they kind of get a bad rap, but they're the dominant generation in the workforce and they're driving the change for business. And um, it's all about sustainable resources and um, challenging businesses and challenging people to change. So it's like, that's what we're all about. We've got a wonderful vehicle here and um, we fit right into that model. And I think the documentary is only being shown through this week. So I don't, I don't know how we get the link. Barbara, well, Barbara, the three of us have it and you have it now, Mike. So whether that link is- Perhaps you could share that link through um, Launch Partners. Yes. And then all of us who have it can then distribute to whoever we feel we, we want to share this message with. Yeah. Fantastic. Anyone else, Madeline? Um, or who else was it? Suzanne, you, you had some comments about it as well. Yeah, Barbara sent it to me, and um, I was only 30 minutes into this hour and a half movie, and um, you were the first person, Mike, that I knew that I needed to get it to you because I just was blown away at um, the message that Barbara just shared. And I think one of the things that jumped out at me was this concept of not only just the, the bottom line where it's all about profits, this is, they call this the triple bottom line. Mm -hmm. where it's about people, the planet as well. So to me, that was, wow, that was an aha. And a couple of these companies, um, our companies, they, they made a point of saying that the companies didn't, were not allowed to um, edit any of this content. So it was just whatever this person that's making the film decided to include. And, um, I wanted to work at these companies. You know, they're companies that, that everyone's happy at. They're all working as a unit. They're all about being more, humans being more. That's how I felt when I was watching each company. I felt, wow, this is really powerful. And so, the, words that, the words that kept coming up were democratization. <laughs> uh, all the words that we've been using being human, treating these employees all looked happy, and they they had T-shirts, and they were um, they were respected for what they had to offer. They listened, they gave feedback in, and the CEO listened to them, and they all ended up being terribly profitable because it because they gave what the Bob Proctor principle is, and it just comes back if you give. But what they did for these indigenous places, and I have, no, I'm not going to say what I was going to say. Never mind. Cut. Um, uh, <laughs> it was just going there and, uh, you know, cleaning up. And uh, Proctor and Gamble, one example of this in Panama, I think it was, with all of this garbage is people are going there to get their, um, their rare plants that are so curative and so forth. And so then in return, they're getting plastic bottled water. Well, now they have all these landfills. So Proctor Gamble came to give them and is taking it all away for their recyclable. So they're getting, they're shipping their ships there, getting it for less, cleaning up their island, and they're able to then grow more of their trees that make more of the plants. I mean, we're helping the third world countries. And when, they, when you talk about the global impact and the ripple, that part was just so huge. And, and Mike, it really puts us into where is NECAN in this? I mean, there was a time when we gave to uh, Autism Speaks and the first time there was a hurricane and this and that and the other. And, you know, like, what have we done as a corporation in giving back? And the green, when we had a corporate headquarters and keeping the electrical bill down and so forth, you know, just integrating that into who we really are, our purpose, not just us running around with Well, I, I, can, I, can, I can't speak for Nikan, um, <laughs> but we can speak for ourselves we and, we can. Can be, and we can be those, you know, I think the, the, for change. The, bo the polar bear club that Nikan had initiated yeah. so many years ago was about us um, doing something on a local level that would have if on a, like a, a big impact kind of like that kid who started a movement for planting trees and now they've planted I don't know only billion trees because he just got that whole concept going and networked it and then so it, it really begins with us in the field taking 
designing and shaping the future of our business, of what our culture is. And, you know, when I got involved in Niken, I got involved at a time where I didn't feel like I was much in any way, shape or form, except possibility. And, and I felt like I was fortunate to hook my wagon to this big, huge ship that was, you know, that had gone places and is going places. And the more successful I became and the, the bigger the footprint that I had, and now to a point where I realize the company is us. It's not something that exists um, without us. It, it, it couldn't function independent of us. The, the intrinsic value is not the product. The, vo- the value of the company, what they would refer to in the business world as goodwill, is the value of the people who in this particular case are highly educated, highly motivated to make an impact and are uh, you know, people of high quality and caliber in terms of their, their value system. So what would you pay for a company that attracted that type of a following and, and that following became their advocates? So Niken through the spirit of Niken has demonstrated this characteristic. Could they do more as a corporation? Of course. Can we not all, each of us, do more as an individual? But I think rather than pointing to Niken and saying, why don't they do this? I think the message here is for each of us to take responsibility and, and be our own Niken. I mean, I'm, I don't know what it is in a, as a percentage of the company, but I'm a, my business represents a large footprint of Niken. It's measurable in terms of a percentage of the company. When I got started, it was 0%. <laughs> of this big company. So we each have an opportunity to make a bigger footprint. And I think that's really where this message could be of use, where we don't look and say, oh, we should pass the ball to Niken and they should be this. I think what we should look at is we're the CEO of our business. We're the future of our company. And the question is, what's the company you want to build? I love these words that I'm hearing, uh, conscious capitalism. Uh, community, harmony, for benefits versus just for profits, sustainable, triple bottom line. I didn't hear what the third one is, but I assume it's profit, people, planet, profit, democratization, global impact, ripple. And these are the kind of words that as you integrate into your script, your script of how you're describing what is Niken, because remember this last month has really been about redefining our understanding of what is Niken in our own mind, in our own vision, and how we speak of it, how we articulate it, so that we're inviting people to the bigger opportunity rather than to the product opportunity or to the franchise opportunity. It's to, the, it's to be part of an organization that creates con- conscious capitalism, that creates personal development, personal growth. We refer to as humans being more. As as we watch it, though, one of the things they talked about in there was hooking it to innovative business models. I mean, it is just so timely uh, for what we've been doing. And, you know, for me, and uh, I've stated it on here several times, but all those times that humans being more and all those times of trying to get down to that succinct mission statement and succinct, (laughs) uh, but with meaning and this was just so, the timing was just so perfect. And I think particularly for this small group of like-minded individuals that get it. And, and so to help us articulate it and to also feel hope. Um, I, I want to mention something you just brought up because, and, and Dee, we'll, we'll get to you next. I saw your hand jump up there. But um, we need to expand this group. This group and this dialogue, um, if it's important, if you feel it's worthy and it's it's important, then, um, I mean, uh, I know my critics consider a lot of this dialogue as just philosophical, you know, filibustering. Mental or something, yeah. (laughs) Whatever. Um, I just know that there's operating the business at the level of a hamburger flipper and there's operating the business at the level of a world-class CEO. And I'd like to think of myself as the latter. And I'd like to think of the people who um, see themselves 
as inspired by my message and my way of my candor, my way of, of presenting myself as of, of like mind, people who see themselves as world caliber leaders. Um, and so what does it mean to be a world caliber leader? It means you've got some depth. You don't have to be always the loudest person in the crowd and you don't always have to be the one who has the last say. You're just somebody who knows what to say, when to say it, that can move the ship a little bit further forward or move the situation a little bit further uh, in the direction it needs to go. So, um, And care for, with love and passion, the one that wants to flip the hamburgers and wants to own the franchise. Love yeah. them and respect yeah. them and know where they are and listen to what they want. They're so valuable in the supply chain. The other Correct. word that that was used so beautifully in all of these examples. When, when, you, when you see the, um, Randy's gonna love this too from her Indian stories, when you see them going to meet with these um, tribal chiefs in their little outside huts uh, and the, res the mutual respect, and even though they couldn't even speak the same language, the handshake and the respect because of the exchange the exchange and the exchange was at the heart level and the, and what they were able to say is they had more children that like we do now, than they have elders. And so the tribal chiefs could see this was for the benefit for the future of the children. And we say that every week on that slide with the obesity and children and children being our future in our product showcase. So, so it was just so perfect. So really everybody does need to see it and maybe getting it out there and showing it and then some little, how about some, a discussion group on Saturday night and inviting people to come in or whatever, like a little, little well, that's an interesting, group, that's an interesting group technique. Uh, what you're talking about there, Madeline, is an interesting approach to prospecting, meaning there could be a gathering. And by the way, this is what they're doing in Latin America, primarily in Mexico. When they talked about having over 900 meetings in their first quarter of this year, a lot of these meetings were not direct Niken meetings. They were meetings that had to do with important uh, subjects, things like parents, stay-at-home moms, things like um, keeping the house um, uh, clean from environmental issues. So that what they were creating were, were opportunities for people to gather under a uh, point of interest, which, by the way, you should look, you should, I'm going to recommend you all start looking at ways of dialoguing through Facebook or just Google. Google is the most amazing thing. You ask Google a question in plain English and it'll give you an answer, a multitude of answers that will help you sort out what you're looking for. But what we're looking for is ways to connect. Um, I listened to Russell Brand today on a, a replay that, of a recording from Friday night. I like watching Bill Maher. And uh, I watched the playback uh, today, and he had Russell Brand. I don't know if you know who Russell Brand is. He's sort of long hair. He usually wears his, his shirt unbuttoned, and he's a comic. He's an actor. He's, a poli he's, he's politically charged. But my goodness, this guy has got one of the highest IQs I've ever heard. He is so articulate and so unbelievably on point. It's almost hard to understand how on point he is. Anyway... Why do I bring that up? Um, I, I'm, I, he said, the ultimate experience of man, what, what's driving people to, I think the, the, they brought the subject of why are people, like he was into drugs, he was, and they said, you know, what's your favorite? And so he was giving you, well, this is this, and this is that, and this one's not so good, but it, 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 it was just hilarious, but so succinct and to the point. And it's like, this guy's a, like a Renaissance man himself. Anyway, what he was saying is, what's the point of all that? connection. Everyone is seeking a connection. At the end of the day, ultimately what drives us is connection. Mm -hmm. The connection to feel, to feel alive, to feel part of something. To, that's connection. That's the, the most basic thing of all things that's driving human psyche. And that's why people are, are doing the things that they're doing that seem so crazy, but they're just trying to find ways to connect. And so when we look at what are we doing to move our business forward? We want to find ways to connect and, and to connect with people who we're looking to um, move into that community and that experience, like the millennials. You know, the, if they're so in, interested in, 
conscious capitalism and you start throwing that those words around in conversations don't be surprised if one of those millennials come up to you and say well i just heard you saying something about conscious capitalism what are you talking about so throw those things out there on your facebook posts on some of your tweets if you're not doing that learn how to do that for goodness sake that's where these guys are that's where that you'll find them go to where they are and make the connections by using the language that they're looking for by representing Niken in the way it needs to be represented I'm going to just use this example one more time I'm holding up a phone here okay now what do I say about this phone that determines what you're going to think about this phone if I say this is a phone it's digital look it's touch screen and you can do all these wonderful things and take pictures and tell time and all that and you're just thinking okay that's an interesting use of the phone or I could hold up the same phone and say this is the ticket to our freedom now this phone means something different I'm still holding up the phone but now there's a different context for the phone so we've got to make Niken in this metaphor the phone speak to this audience of people to this group of people who are looking for connection to this group of people who are like-minded, who are, who are looking for conscious capitalism, who are looking for the triple bottom line, who are looking for sustainability, who are looking for benefit versus for profits. That's, that's why there's been a, a modification in the language of the flyers for the launch partners. That language is being modified to move and guide us closer and closer to the mark of what it is that we're looking to attract. Notice the words are words that, if you remember Dr. Emoto's work, where he worked with water, words leave an impression even on the water. Shift the vibrational frequency of the water, which is measurable and can be photographed. So words are very, very important. They, they create the, the, um, an expression of what it is that you are about and what therefore like-minded people will be attracted to. So the use of words is very, very important. Choose your words carefully. Look at the flyer, the most recent flyer. Again, if you're not sure where that is, just go to, um, where do we go? Active Wellness Tour on Facebook. Active Wellness Tour on Facebook. And just look at the new flyer. It's fantastic. And it shows you, first of all, colors of fall, beautiful colors but it gives you a characterization of what it is that we're looking to attract. And so, um, yeah, the, the, this discussion and this particular call, by the way, specifically this call, is, a, is called aligning with success. And Mike, they use those terms. <laughs> they use what well, terms? They copied you. Yes, they were in well, <laughs> I'm speaking here, I am like waving around. And Sorry, so I, I, I let me Are switch. Let me switch because I've got, I've got, I'm not on gallery view, so I'm missing some of your cues. So here we are, back on gallery view. Yeah, well, I love Madeline. Just goes for it. Yeah, I'm waving my hands around. I just have to say that one or two days before I got the link to this uh, clip, which is called Prosperity, I happened to. Um, uh, a friend called me and she was listening to NPR and they were having a call-in show on MLM and pyramid schemes. I tried to call in seven times and I couldn't. So if you want to hear all of that language that we are not going to use anymore and like just want to bury your head because of how false it is and how companies have $5,000 buy-ins and then you watch this clip it really makes a huge impact on you. You don't have to, but that's kind of what happened for me. Which it's is the red flag and why people don't want to buy or don't want to join one of those schemes. They gave all these statistics in that. Actually, listening to that and watching this, it's just like perfect timing too. Yeah. Great. Okay. Yes, Suzanne. And I think with D, we're going to get to D. I, yeah, sorry about that. Okay. So let's let's go to D first and then we'll go to Suzanne. Okay. Well, that's okay. Anyway, um, I was wondering because nobody had mentioned the name of the movie and I thought it's got to be Prosperity because I saw it as well. And uh, it was very late. I had no intention of watching it, but it was, it was riveting. And I couldn't help but think they ought to be covering Nikon. And, you know, because there was so much in... The, the things you've already mentioned and the philosophy of what they were looking for in these companies that was so aligned with 
how I see Nikon and our mission and our purpose. And, um, and the whole idea of, you know, being disruptive to what is the standard of care, certainly in North America, but probably worldwide in many countries at least that I have moved to the Western model of medicine. And um, so an email came through this morning because they've got some follow-up programs that are going to be playing for about 10 days, I believe, because they couldn't get everything into this one documentary. So I responded back and sometimes there's a no reply, but I thought, okay, well, I'll just say, I think this is really important work. Thank you so much. And um, by the way, have you ever heard of the company Nikon <laughs> out of Irvine, California? And I said, they have a great concern for humans, for pets, for self-care, for the planet. Um, and I got a response back. Hmm. And so then on my response back to that response, I copied Jeff in it as a, a blind carbon copy just to, you know, and then send them another email just to trigger it that I was saying, you know, bringing up Meekin and, you know, I presumed it was fine to do, but it was, um, you know, like you said, Madeline, I, I, what are we doing as a company? And you said, Mike, what are we doing as individuals, as our own company? I mean, it, but they, they now are putting it out there. And last night there was a, a 60 minute segment of a fellow who owns several restaurants and he started a no smoking policy 12 years before it became standard policy in restaurants. And now he's started no tip, but he's raised the prices, but all the workers get better wages. And, and he is so much about customer service and all. And I thought, you know, people want to make a difference in this world many do. And so it feels so good to be aligned with a company like Nikon and, and then to see a movie like Prosperity out there that will hit millions of people and other things. I mean, and, and so it feels like we're really doing the right thing by what we're doing now, because it's, it's out of a, a care for others and for our world and um it's for the trajectory of yes. people you know yes. um suzanne thank you for that suzanne um so a couple of things one is i know that in the past we've always been um taught or one of the things that i was taught early in nikan is that we're the marketing arm of nikan but what we really are is we're the heart of Niken. We're more than just the marketing arm. So it was just kind of a, a shift in your in your words earlier that allowed me to say, yeah, we, we are more than just the marketing arm. We're, we're the heart. Um, so a, a thing that um, was brought up in one of the companies, and I had heard of some of these companies, and you will too, but some of them were new to me. And this one was called Thrive. Mm -hmm. And um, these two young guys and I jotted down one thing that one of the co-owners said that um, it's not a, it's not just about our mission, our mission. And I'm not going to get this word for word, but um, mission based business can succeed at the highest levels and mission based businesses. The mission is not a distraction, but it's a core to its success. And, you know, I just went, wow. And I, of course, you can play it back and you can listen to it again. And I, uh, it was just very profound. So I'll send that through the launch partners when I get Fantastic. I'll tell you something. Um, there is a, there's a place for this conversation, Niken in this light. As much as there's a place for Nika in the, in the light of people who just want to make some part-time money selling products, there's, there's, that's the different aspects of our business model. However, what's going to create the movement 
And what's only ever created a movement is when it involves the heart, passion, purpose, the, the core of human nature. So um, I think this is the most important conversation because if it wasn't for this kind of conversation driving these large movements in the world, you know, the idea of a guy like Elon Musk wanting to go to Mars, okay? Who is this guy to think he can do all this stuff? Well, who's this guy to think he can't? But what is he doing? He's, in, he's inspiring my daughter who's in aerospace engineering second year and she's talking Elon Musk. You know, that's, you know, I, I was inspired by Star Trek growing up. I wanted to be Captain Kirk and do that stuff. If it wasn't for these guys creating the impossible, you know, who would be following? Who would be creating? And so this is important work because we're expanding our understanding of what's possible. We're the front, on the frontier of human consciousness. We're on the frontier of shifting consciousness into this purpose-driven conscious capitalism, which is, I mean, it, you've got to recognize how critical this is and how critical a time we are at right now in, in the possibility of, the, of our nations. I mean, our nations right now are, for the most part, being driven by people who, you know, rose to the power uh, following very corrupt paths, compromising everything that matters. And I can't say that of everyone, but I can certainly say that of most, because that seems to be what we, what we can observe, is that our, our countries, our companies are driven by people who are driven by the wrong motive. And, and that doesn't look at all like the United Federation of Planets that I wanted to build. So this is, for me, the, the starting point of that reality. And, um, and I think it's important that we have this dialogue and we keep this dialogue. In fact, I'd like you to dial in some people. I think you need to dial in some people onto this channel who are part of your group, part of your network, so that this group can grow. You know, I, I don't flash a check and I don't, I don't offer matching bonuses or anything like that for participation. Um, I, I want genuine participation, not manipulation. And I think that's really important. And that's, that's going to drive people to heights that are, that's characteristic of what's really inside the, the spirit of human beings. So um, we don't, we need more passion, more purpose, and more people who are driven by that. So please invite others to this call. If you feel that this call has been of a benefit to you, bring your posse. Tell them this is where we meet on Monday nights. This is important, and it'll feed you the information that you need to be fed that will sustain you in a different way, in a meaningful way that, that, is, that moves mountains, the kind of stuff that makes the, the future possible. Anyway, any final comments before we sign up? Yes, Carol. So, um, this is so powerful um, for me. And I have to say that, that it's like it's seeping into my bloodstream and it's, it's, it's not like... Um, um, I'm just grabbing on and doing everything I should be doing or everything, you know, in terms of the business. But I think it's so foundational for how I'm evolving. And I just happened to be doing my 2016 income test. <laughs> and I was talking to my accountant and she was telling me, oh, you can't, you can't use all this for your and all that stuff because you only made this much money and all this stuff and how you know the irs is coming up and i was just trying to think of ways to broaden i mean conscious capitalism means that you, you might not be making so much profit at first but you're laying a foundation you know and 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 i've heard you know at least one thing that I thought was directed at you for this, um, for what you're doing, the leadership you're giving. And 
you know, there is that tension, but you were so beautiful in, in the response. I forget when it was, but your response in terms of what audience are we speaking to and, and um, you know, to be mindful of that. And for, for me to just claim my authority and my power for the business that I'm doing and how I'm developing it and what needs to be invested in, in order for me, you know, to do that. Um, well, this just gives me confidence that I can speak with my accountant and I can justify, you know, what I'm doing and how I'm doing it and what it costs to do that. And that, um, and that, that for me, you know, because she goes back to like my pension is, is ministry. And she's trying to get me to, separate out the two and I said you know what I wouldn't be in this if I didn't think it was ministry and I don't know how the, the tax code codes it but I can't separate it you know, I can't. <laughs> then you're the movie I sent my I sent the movie to my financial counselor I said, I'm going to just yeah, send it to me that link because but anyway yeah the point is that I will be able to you know and I and I will and I, I'm just putting the thing down and um, I'll, but I will have the words to support it with <laughs> if anything comes of it, you know. Absolutely. I mean, Absolutely. we're we're in the business of humans being more. Um, yeah. I love what I used the a, a couple of weeks ago. Maybe it was protocol for self actualization in yeah. each of the five pillars. So, um, I mean, who's to say what's what's not an investment uh, when you're investing in people? You're investing in your business. Yes. essentially. And that's, that's one of the keys to success of Lee Iacocca and other great uh, CEOs who built huge companies. They invested in people recognizing that that's where your value is. Right. And these companies that you're describing on this documentary, they're putting their money into the people and the people are shining because they now have an environment where they feel empowered and they feel supported. They're connected and they're connected to the mission, and so you're getting the maximum horsepower out of a human being. I mean, I love what my, my sponsor used to say. People will work nine to five for a living, five to nine for a lifestyle, but for a cause, they'll work around the clock. And so that's, right. that's, that's what's happening with these corporations that finally hit the, the, uh, the, the, the sweet spot, the, the, sweet spot in, in the people they're working with. They found their passion. And anyway, I, guys, I, yeah. I want to want to learn more about South America and the, the dialogue and the just because that's been my whole vision is to bring people together, you know, for different um, topics, and and that's what's been. It's like it's just sort of growing on me. Like, okay, that is how you're going to find somebody training. who's representing the business community in the the Spanish speaking market where you're at. Find somebody who represents, specifically represents that dialogue and say, look, here's the situation. Um, this is what I'm looking for. Would you help? Yeah. So, you help? yeah, it's all we're asking for is help. And if there's somebody who's representing the business community, that means they're networked and plugged into the who's who in the business community. There are going to be people who can help. And that's, and that's what you do. You just look for like-minded people who are looking for what we've got to offer. And what is it that you're gonna present? Now, now, the bigger the picture, the more likely you're gonna be interesting and get their attention. And keep that in mind, that, that the, if you're looking for major people or people who can influence a situation, you've gotta show them how this is a situation that can influence in a big way. So, you know, that's when you start using words like conscious capitalism. That's when you, you want to start writing these things down and bring yes. them into your script because exactly. the words you use will define you. That's how yes. they'll measure you. And that's why I'm so impressed with this Russell brand because, I mean, honest to God, I'm just sitting there thinking, wow, I wish I could speak like this guy. And he's so <laughs> fast. It's like, <laughs> like, I can't keep up to this guy, but I can tell he's brilliant. You don't have to be so fast. Brilliant. That's true, but he's brilliantly and fast. he's brilliant and fast. Anyway, guys, this is so fast. It's better. Your pace is. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. I'm sort of like um, you know 
2.0 and he's like 6.0 or something no. like that. <laughs> <laughs> I, went, I went to see Blade Runner and they have like Nexus Model 6 and they have whatever. Anyway, never mind that. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, listen, I appreciate you being on tonight's call as always. And like I said, please invite others. I think if you feel this discussion, this dialogue is important to feed them a level of, of, of I don't know, intellect, emotion, a connection that can drive them um, and feed, uh, fuel their passion for Niken and for their own vision of what's possible, then please invite them. We should be expanding this call as a matter of purpose. So thanks for joining. Laura, you have something you want to add before we sign out? I just, I just you know, the water thing that you, you shared. Yes. Okay. I, that's what I feel like. I feel like I'm water. And every time I'm exposed to this particular meeting or meeting with other people on Zoom, or I feel like I'm changed. Yeah. And I feel like it's like, it's, I know that, that from glory to glory, I'm changed for the better. And I don't know what I look like under the microscope. And that's not mine to even worry about because God will handle that. But I feel like I'm changed. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, and people that, by the way, by definition means your world has changed and you will see it reflected back to you in so many different ways. So let's keep that trajectory on the upward round. All right, everybody have a great night. See you next Thank week. You. Thanks, Thank Michael. You. Thanks so much.